Project Aquafresh is groundbreaking research into fish gastronomy. In a world where we need to feed a growing population, is it possible to produce cultivated fish that's both sustainable in large quantities and one that top chefs will fight for being the highest quality raw material to use? We know there are many factors that will affect the quality of the fish, but in this film we aim to find out how ageing and time after slaughter will affect its taste. For centuries we have farmed animals able to control the end products, but with fish it's an unwritten paper. Now with fast growing aquaculture and new technologies we're able to influence its menoir, the equivalent for terroir for wine, like water quality, feed, geography, habitat and how the farmers care daily for the fish to be a circular production. This analysis is now possible thanks to advancements in gastronomy and biotechnology, allowing us to make the link between production factors from the fish's gene pool to the plate. The Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences and Örebro University are collaborating to find all this out, spearheaded by Professor Anders Kiesling, a leading figure in the global field of aquaculture. We're bringing the biochemists together with the restaurant chefs, students. The whole project is about creating this interaction between the farmer and the end customer. I returned to Sweden from Norway after 16 years and ended up at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences, a university dedicated to sustainable production of food. So it became quite natural to bring this old dream up again of actually starting in the tool of the mouth of the top chef. What should a good fish fillet really look like, taste like? They are the ones who educate the, the public. Can you tell me a little more why you choose these partners in the project? I'm an expert on producing the fish, I'm an expert on, on the product quality and technical aspects. But in Sweden we do have a university that has specialized on the actual food and the cooking and the meal itself. That's the home of the Swedish Academy of Gastronomy. So who would be better? to work with. Welcome to the heart of taste and meal experience. We are at the Department of Culinary Arts and Meal Science here in Grytetan. And what we're doing here is some groundbreaking research where we are combining aquaculture and sensory science and gastronomy. It's research about the quality on the raw material when it comes to food. Our part within that project is responsible for the sensory analysis on the fish. They really want the, the human part when they are talking about equality. It's an honor for us to be part of this because I think we can actually bring some special knowledge and experience to this kind of a project. We can actually work with the chefs and understand the handicraft and how they are working with the food but at the same time we can measure the senses in sensory science because I think this kind of a combination is really important into the future of food. Consumers are changing a lot. The, the more knowledge that we chefs and also experts and scientists are showing, it's, they're getting more and more interested in the products and how they are fished, caught, produced, slaughtered from start to the end on the plate. When I talk to very good chefs, they feel more insecure when it comes to fish as raw material. But fish is something that we really like to work with, especially in the Nordic regions where we have great fish with the cold climates and the cold waters. The majority of the quality criteria we're using today are based on wild fisheries. We should explore the possibilities of cultivated fish. Cultivated gives us options to produce a completely new product line, adding to the wild line. The Arctic char farming of Sweden is very interesting. This farming is a fantastic environment. Not only do we have control over what the fish does during its lifetime of production, during harvest and during the process afterwards, we can actually start to look into is there genetic differences too. Those kind of more fine-tuning will even be between families. Stress at slaughter is a major problem. 
There we know that we are changing the pH, which will change the configuration of the proteins inside. Today we don't really know what is the stress effect of metabolites and what are the storing effects of metabolites, or that means breakdown. Today we are in Stockholm in Sweden and Ulliksdals Vajhus and what we do here is we're training the panel in tasting and we're training the chefs in how to prepare the samples for this tasting. To do sensor analysis you need the trained panels for the assessments and we always use the students. The panel don't know what's going on in the kitchen when it comes to coding. So today we're testing chart. We both cook them in a water bath, as well as uh, serve them raw. We are very interested now to see what happens when we taste it raw before rigor with all the energy left in the muscle compared to after. The fish has been stored for 72 hours, 24 hours and 5 hours on ice before we took out the samples. The fish was first of all filleted by the chefs. They took out uh, the fillets from one side for evaluation of the taste and the other side of the fish was cut in smaller pieces and given to us so we could freeze them down in liquid nitrogen. The, the samples we took yesterday down in cut it in small pieces with an extraction with chloroform and methanol. To destroy the cells we also treated with ultrasound centrifugation to separate the, the water phases and then the chloroform. We need to cut off the proteins so, so we can run the NMR. So what we do here is that we measure uh, the content of different compounds. We call them metabolites using different methods. For example, mass spectrometry or NMR. The next step is to see if the, the size of the signal here can be predictive coming from different metabolites and the sensory quality judged by a chef. This platform is funded strategically by the university to support the research in the field of agriculture. Analytic technology has caught up with our wish to compare the very good chef's palate with what's going on in the actual raw material. We can see that totally different metabolites are dominating in both cooked and raw. Scientists are now looking into which groups of substance those are representing. We can see in this graph a distinct difference between storage times. Sweeter tastes dominate the start of this process and with storage develops more free amino acids, bitter flavours and umami, with the taste fading out over time. We're still in the initial stages of this work but it will open up a whole new world. Compiling the results by individual variables is a difficult task as the brain is perceiving a cocktail effect of all the attributes at once. However, the panel did agree on distinct markers on a scale. With the sashimi after only five hours on ice, we see it's distinct in colour. It tastes metallic, there's a grittiness, a grassiness and distinct aromas. Scoring just on the minor scale were bitterness, firmness, stickiness and then lowest was a nutty taste. Waiting 24 hours, the sashimi began to develop a sweetness. The panel did score freshness but also described it as fatty. 72 hours, we see words like tender, juicy, salt, and most important, umami. By cooking the fish, the results showed that the fish that had been stored on ice for 72 hours still had a positive scoring for mineral aroma, umami, sweetness, tenderness, and freshness. But the 24 hours on ice was less metallic, nutty, salty, and surprisingly, the fish not long into its natural riga stages but cooked was firm, sticky and lower in acidity. Both the chefs and the panel agreed that the fish stored 72 hours on ice had developed a deeper taste of umami, sharing a similar reaction on taste as when meat is stored. The results from the chefs is in line with the results from the trained panel. They didn't like the, the five hours fish either. It was super interesting to see how the fish really behaved after a few hours and, and it was a big difference. When you eat it raw, I, I didn't like because it was it was too fresh and when the, the fish was too hard. But when you cooked it, it was the 
the best fish. Basically what our results are indicating here in this project is saying that the fish are actually benefiting on being stored on ice for hours or even days in order to extract the unique flavor. I think the results change our way of thinking. At the beginning of this project I could see as a coordinator how SLU had the knowledge about the fish even before it was born until slaughter and how Gritetan had the knowledge from slaughter to it was a dish on a plate. And now I can see the interaction. They both can see the importance of production for the final taste. We can see now a, a chain from the farm to chemical lab that try to, to develop better food products. I think that's so important for the future to, to, to combine the research with a handicraft that people have within the business. This kind of a link is important because I think uh, big companies and chefs and, and everyone who's working with these kind of products and working with the end consumers and the guests, they need to understand the science part behind that. I'm so proud that we could work together with our students. They can go out when they start to work and they could tell people about what we are doing, what kind of research we do. Well, we're interested in, in good quality of yeah, the food. exactly. And want to make big steps forward. I think we are ready for a change here in Sweden. Yes, I, I really think so. So you think Sweden has the potential of aquaculture farming? Oh, absolutely. Sweden is very well placed to actually get circular production of food through aquaculture. This kind of interaction between the farmer and the good chef is happening now because aquaculture has opened that possibility. In this initial project, we explored how storage time after slaughter affects the biochemical profile of the fillet, how the changes relate to the sensory panel evaluation and the chef's gastronomic judgment. This study can now be used in our following project focusing on taste and environment, where the next generation feed for farmed fish is one major factor.